Common Ground. I'm your host Paul Herring and tonight I have a special guest for you, Brian Cow Colley. Uh, ooh, I've been doing it right all afternoon and now I just get it wrong. Brian Colley, Lieutenant Governor for the state of Michigan. He's going to be with us this evening. We're going to have some questions for him. I hope you guys will enjoy it. But first of all, I need to say thank you to Ken um, Van Wagner at the Good Bean Cafe for allowing us to take the program here this afternoon. We're down here in the back room having a great old time. Now, you know, one of the first questions I ask on Common Ground is for me to just tell me a little bit about yourself so we can find out who you are. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be on the show and, uh -huh. and uh, to go over all, uh, all, all kinds of things having to do with the, the water crisis, what's happening in Flint. My name is Brian Kelly, Lieutenant Governor, and, um, and really a person on the ground here in, in Flint trying to just make good things happen. And, um, but just to give you a little bit of background, I, I spent most of my time in, um, in the time that I spent in the public sector working on things, uh, issues as diverse as tax policy all the way through to uh, disability advocacy, and autism, insurance reform, and, and uh, substance use disorder uh, policies. So a wide range of things that I work on. If you go back to my time in, uh, that, that I, before my time in government, I was a banker. I spent about 10 years in the banking industry before I got involved. So it's been uh, a, quite a ride over the course of the last 20 years. But uh, really, where my passion is is trying to to, to really remove barriers to for for people to achieve their full potential, particularly people that have uh, the the most significant barriers in front of them, like for example, people with disabilities, uh, developmental disabilities, especially, and um, and then to help uh, people essentially achieve their full potential. Talk to me briefly about the lieutenant governor's job what I mean what do you do you just wait for something to happen to the governor or what you know the, there's a there's <laughs> a couple of constitutional roles which are the um, I preside as president of the Senate okay and uh, so basically run the operations of the Senate sessions themselves but I only vote in the event of a tie which might sound familiar to people because that's the the way that the vice presidency is patterned um, or that's the way the, the responsibilities of the vice president um, operate as well. Um, but I also operate as the um, as uh, the acting governor when the governor is out of state. So those are the, the constitutional aspects of the job. The majority of the job, though, is whatever is delegated through the governor's administration. So um, mental health policy, um, several employment issues, uh, particularly around um, around uh, people that have substantial barriers to their employment. Um, substance use disorder uh, policy. I've spent a lot of time on tax policy as well, uh, budgets and things that, that are all hands on deck for the administration. So I never really know from week to week exactly what I'll be uh, working on, and basically wherever the need is greatest. So, so you're not just another pretty face. You're the the worker out there, huh? In, this, in, in this uh, this administration, um, the the role of the lieutenant governor is a much more active one. In the past, it's been kind of a ceremonial role, mm -hmm. and uh, but in, in this case, we're there's so many issues facing Michigan and so many issues that needed attention, mm -hmm. and I uh, just decided to really dive in, particularly to the areas where I have um, are just very passionate about making things better. Nice. Let's talk about <coughs> Flint. Water crisis and all. We're two, two and a half years in. How often are, are you in Flint? <clears throat> I'm personally on the ground in Flint um, three days a week, and I started that in January. Mm -hmm. Just really wanted to create um, a, a better connection with people in terms of trying to um, 
to ensure that the work that is happening with the state mm -hmm. is um, is sustainable over time. In, in other words, working with people to create sustainable systems of uh, of improvement and, and uh, sustainable uh, improvements in the in the state or in the uh, across the city. And so I was afraid that <clears throat> with their crisis response, people would uh, would come in and you know do things like say the state just comes in does things and then at some point when the crisis is over leave and not and not have the community any any better off than it was before and that's that's really what the the intention of my work is to make sure that that we're working in partnership with people on the ground that we're helping people to be uh, to be uh, successful and to develop that uh, sustainability over the long term is the, is the state's plan going to fix this there, it's there are several aspects of this. The state on its own can't uh, can't fix everything. We really do need to have um, the the uh, the partnership at the at the city, at the county, the state, and the federal government in order to uh, in order to make things right again. And that and, and so the the state's plan itself very robust, very comprehensive across the board. And um, the in the in the closer we can work, but in particular with the city. But also with, with gov governmental levels all the way up through the um, through the federal government, the the better it will be. So the infrastructure part, I, I know that that part's going to get fixed. Whether it's the the coating of the pipes in the interim, or the replacement of the of the service lines, mm -hmm. uh, particularly the ones that have lead issues in them, um, that's all going to get fixed. But you all, you also have a community that is 40 percent poverty and. Um, and year after year shows up on the on the FBI's high, highest crime list, uh, particularly violent crimes. And um, those are the sorts of things that are real barriers to potential for any community. And so I, the way I look at it, as long as there's this type of presence here and this much work that's happening, um, that we should we should look at trying to break some of those cycles too. Fix some more stuff, huh? It, it, right. And, and but but to do it different in the future fix stuff with people not to just come in and do things but work with people to make sure that the things that are happening will last over the long term we've got a great deal of problems here in Flint like you said yourself I think the most uh, prevalent one is our unemployment rate that and the number of uh, ex-felons that we have living here and as you know many of our state laws um, make it quite difficult for people returning to the communities to to get work, in your planning, are you going to attack that as well? Yeah, let me let me. This is what I'm really excited about. So let me just go over the main the main points of the of the response plan. So we already talked about uh, about infrastructure, and we can talk about that more if you'd like. But right. infrastructure is one of those kind of early and immediate and urgent um, issues. But then also education and um, and healthcare and nutrition all really important aspects to, uh, to dealing with or mitigating the impacts of, of lead. But economic development is so important for the long-term ability to, to sustain the good things that, that start. Mm -hmm. um, is uh, People need work, and not just jobs, but, but careers, a different type of a future. And so uh, economic development is, a, is, a, is one of the pillars to the plan that's on the table right now. We have a goal to, to have a thousand new jobs in Flint by the end of the year, nice. and, uh, and and these aren't <coughs> passing out water. I hope no, exact no. I mean, that, <laughs> okay. that, that passing out. You know, we decided to, to to phase out the National Guard so that people here in Flint could get those jobs and make some money mm -hmm. um, on the um, on the activities relating to the water crisis. But what I'm talking about is permanent, ongoing jobs, okay. and um, and so. But that needs to be just the beginning. Now you had brought up. Um, uh, ex felons, yes. and that is a um, this is an area where I really am very passionate about. That we need to get to a point where we can turn the page on on uh, this mindset that helping a person with a felony on their record to be successful, to to uh, to go out there and live a productive and independent life, that somehow that's anti-victim. It's it's not anti-victim. In mm -hmm. fact, I, I think it's one of the most pro-victim things that you can do because you're giving somebody a different pathway to take. No more recidivism or the revolving door in and out of jail or prison it, and, and every time that happens you, a new victim is created mm -hmm. well why don't we why don't we just help people to get to get back to a place where they have some better options and um, and so this is uh, th this is, is is an area where I think we have a tremendous amount of upside potential 
and and even in uh, let's I'd give you an example in, in Ionia we have a prison uh, the Handlin uh, prison there where it has uh, skilled trades development centers in there where people mm -hmm. are really learning mm -hmm. the type of trades that are in high high demand today okay. and so what we're trying to do is make sure a person leaves prison with the ability and then to connect them with an employer leaves prison with the ability to uh, to go out there and and uh, start a new career and a lot of these times we're trying to think about like get away from the mindset of jobs and, and move over to career tracks where somebody's got something to really exciting to live for in the future and I think that really all this um, fits into the the overall plan but these aren't things just for Flint there's a lot of communities that are that are struggling with um, with with these uh, with groups of people within their community that no matter how good the economy gets they don't seem to really be able to benefit much from that and that's where we, we really need to do the hard work of, of figuring out what are the barriers to success for somebody maybe it's a substance use disorder mm -hmm. maybe it is a, a, a felony on their record and nobody will give them a shot right. or they don't really have the the type of skills to take advantage of the opportunities out there to get that shot and uh, in other cases it might be a, a person with a developmental disability maybe with autism or something and because their personality or their social skills are um, are challenging that people don't really see the potential in what they could bring to the workforce and so as we as we really zero in or drill in on, on the barriers to, to those groups of people getting employment or finding opportunity I think here in Michigan we could redefine what full employment even means. It seems like it'd be really simple because there's a lot of state laws that hamper the uh, I guess uh, I want to say recidiv re no. recidivism. Yeah, Reci that's coming back to the city You're or right. going back to jail. I'm yeah, that's where you go back into to, to you get out and then you end up going go back, back yeah. into jail, and um and and so that's it. That's the thing is, you know the the old way of just you know this attitude of of tough on crime. You know everybody wants to be tough on crime, but the thing is if you don't if you don't actually help a person to, um, to to take a different pathway. I mean, most people that go into prison, they're gonna get out someday. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, if if we don't do the, the, the work to help that person uh, to really transition back, you know, back in the old days, it was just um, that, you know, three months before a release date, you know, they'd start a transition plan, but really a person just back into the community on their own. And, and, and here's the thing, not only do they not have any better prospects than before, they have worse, worse. prospects, worse. and so um, that's where where there is there is work that's happening now on both in, in giving that giving people better uh, prospects after they leave with uh, with skills and things, but uh, but also I think we need to pay close attention to substance use disorders. All right, I need you to hold that thought, David Cali, right, Lieutenant Governor, State of Michigan. We're going to take a break. I'm expecting this guy to be the poster child for drop the box here in Michigan. You guys don't go away. We'll be right back. Flint Community Schools, Garden Education. Thanks to Food Corps Michigan, a partner in Flint's Community Education Initiative, students, families, and neighbors have an opportunity to discover the joys of growing their own fruits and vegetables. Learn more at flintcommunityed.org. So Maddie, congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow, I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money gonna come from? 
bill collectors. They're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to financial <laughs> stability, don't get left behind. Not home. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. W-F-O-V. What if we... Why can't we? What missing? Why not? Our voices. Our voices. W-F-O-V. What would happen if we... W-F-O-V. How many times have I said... I've got the solution. Not everybody's bad. Why can't we work together? W-F-O-V. Our voices. Our voices. W-F-O-V. You know what the problem is? There's other communities. Our voices. I like to hear it. W-F-O-V. I heard... W-F-O-V. What? WFOV. Our voice is 259 978 Flint's newest radio Our station. Voices. Located right here in Flint, Michigan. The Our Good voices. News Radio. If you're interested in getting involved, having your Our own voices. show, or just supporting the station, give us a call at 259 9789. That's 259 9789. It's Our station. Voices. Located right here in Flint, Michigan. The Good News Radio. If you're interested in getting involved, having your own show, or just supporting the station, Give us a call at 259-978. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at him. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. <laughs> Ballerina. <laughs> Sometimes all it takes to be a dad is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. Na, 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 na. I love you so. I love you. I love you. La 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 la. La 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 la. We're here. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Common Ground. I'm your host, Paul Herring. If you're just tuning in, we're down at the Good Bean Cafe, and my guest this afternoon, or evening, whichever time you're watching this, is Lieutenant Governor Kelly. He's come to talk to us about the Flint water crisis. And just before the break, we were talking about felons uh, being reintroduced to the community a little easier. You know, I'm a, I'm a sad believer in the prison pipeline uh, conspiracy. And uh, what you're saying sounds like a good deal. And the state has all the cards. So I'd really like to see the state jump in and do something. We had a campaign here in Genesee County to drop the box. In other words, we wanted to take the felony box off of job applications. And I really can't remember if it was successful or not. I think the county did it on its own. But there, if the state could start a campaign like that, it'd be fabulous. There, there are several entities that are looking at this now, particularly when, I mean, there's so much demand for uh, for people and a lot of um, a lot of companies and agencies and and uh, governmental units are getting to a point where um, where they're willing to consider people that maybe a few years ago that they weren't. Right. And so I know that there's a group of, of uh, business people in the city of and in, in, in the city of Detroit itself, uh, kind of a task force, if you will. Okay. Um, that uh, that the mayor had put together. And um, and that they're looking at a lot of these different things too. I'm pretty excited to see the type of work that or uh, what the outcome is. Of that, I mean, at the end of the day, um, if if we want people to be successful and independent, and uh, and productive, um, contributing members of society, then um, having a, a career track is a really important part of that. So um, I, th I think the issues go um, a lot deeper than you know the box on the application. That's mm -hmm. you know it's one kind of tactic, if you will, to try and remove a barrier. Right. Uh, but ultimately, there there are some. Um, that there we need to get to a point where we can see potential in people instead of you know a lot of people have strengths and people have weaknesses and if all people think are the are the areas of struggle the weaknesses or maybe mistakes uh, from the past 
then um, you never really get a shot to prove that. What yourself. happened to paying your debt to society? That's what going to jail was all about, paying your debt. And, you know, once you got out. But let's change. Let's switch topics. Yes. Talk to me about some of the groups that you're working with here in Flint. What, what is Mission Flint and, and what's their goal here with the water crisis? Every Friday we have a, a meeting of the, of the individuals from all the different state agencies that are working on things here in Flint. And that's it's called Mission Flint. So it's uh, there's there are point people from every single department and agency that has a part here, mm -hmm. and um, and so what we do is we get together to to report back what have, what has happened in the last week. What are we going to do over the course of the next few weeks? And um, and uh, and look for opportunities for better collaboration and for um, and for um, accountability as well. You know, what, what did you say you were going to get done in the last week? What actually got done? What are the barriers? How can we help each other to, to make sure that, uh, that, that things continue to move? So Mission Flint is, is, that, um, is that group that are that, from the state that are really focused on things here. But outside of that, it's a, um, there, there are so many different aspects to, um, you know, take for example with, with respect to um, um, the, the water uh, distribution centers that we're moving from the, the fire stations now out to all to the nine different wards to have different uh, to make it closer to people and, and more convenient. You're still only going to be able to get one case of water? They, well, you know, actually, that's <laughs> the, one of the misnomers is that I mean, there's one case is what you get, and but if you ask for more, you'll get more. Right. So it's a um, but the uh, but we're, what we're trying to do is to help people understand too that. Um, the the cases of water was more of a more of a short term thing, but now that we have such good uh, filter distribution, we know that the filters work very well. We have widespread um, uh, confirmation across the board, whether it was you know EPA and then our, our own internal uh, review and analysis, and, and Dr. Mark Edwards as well about the um, the efficacy of the of the filters, and that uh, that's a better. Um, a better alternative than um, you know essentially going back and forth and getting water from water bottles particularly when we're entering the summer when there's some risks of having water and plastic bottles and heat now if you don't keep them in the heat no problem but um, but the, the filters I think would be the best option going forward particularly now that the coating is showing to, to been so effective and you know Flint's on the uh, what we're gonna call the tail end of emergency management this PA law that devastated many African-American communities across the state. Do you find that or do you think that we're going to be in a better position when it's all said and done here in Flint financially? Well, when it comes to um, the, the, the emergency manager law, I want to point out too that the, that the emergency manager law itself, while it didn't have the exact same outcomes in every different community, you can point to a place like Detroit, for example, where I don't think anybody would argue that it's much, much better off than it was. They went bankrupt um, be before that. It, 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 so it was, but the bankruptcy was 50 years in coming, and so the emergency manager law really it was the the fastest, most effective um, municipal bankruptcy in the history of America. And it couldn't have happened without the emergency manager law. There's no question about it. It would not have happened uh, without the emergency manager law. And now you have a community that came out of it. They had a whole bunch of debt that was just strangling them. And so because they went through the, the bankruptcy process, they came out of it relieved from so much of that debt. Now they can take more money and put it into services. Um, and so um, the, uh, clearly here, while, while the financial emergency uh, part of it was was um, dealt with without any kind of bankruptcy and and the, and the community late last year came out of the, um, the financial emergency. Mm -hmm. the, the problems with the infrastructure are contributing to a, a very tenuous situation um, when it comes to the future. And that's why economic development is so critically important now. Because the, um, the, the, the trust and the faith and the basic services in the city are important to, to maintain even the, um, the basic revenue streams, which are based on property values, which are already so low. Right. And, uh, and so it re really can't afford for them to go any lower and keep you know, the viability of providing services, the basic services that people need to survive. So that's why I think that the state needs to partner with the city and be prepared to partner over the long term, whether we're talking about health care 
or education. We've got a really big push on early childhood education that's happening now. Um, the nutrition and making sure that kids need 8,000 meals a day um, that are that are delivered to kids no matter which school district they go to because kids in Flint go to about 21 or 22 different school districts 18. around the area mm -hmm. and um, no matter where they're at that 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 they're they're getting those um, nutritional snacks that are high in, in calcium and iron and vitamin C which you need for lead mitigation mm -hmm. and I mean it's a um, we're, we're gonna need to be we need to be prepared to do this over the long term social to deal with the issues what I was told is that we need social workers. We only got a couple minutes left, and I sure. want to give you an opportunity to kind of sum up and tell the people of Flint what you're hoping that they've gotten from this interview. I mean, if nothing else, what points do you want them to take away? There are there are a lot of different people that are doing a lot of things to try and create a better future here, and so the 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 water infrastructure part of it, um, and I put in a little plug for. Uh, for for flushing, mm -hmm. uh, that we we really do need the water to run through the pipes in order for that healing process to continue, and that's underway now. That uh, we're asking people to turn on their tap, each tap in their house for five minutes a day, mm -hmm. in order to do that, they'll see a credit on their water bill on the next month for that. But the um, so there's the there's the intermediate of coating the pipes, and we know from all the testing from all the different agencies, so the same thing that it's getting better and better the water quality. But the uh, the, but the pipe replacement is um, is underway now too, okay. and so the the state has given the city um, enough resources to replace 500 pipes, and um, I I think there are about 30 or so pipes into it, so they're still on the front end of it. Um, but then we're also asking for another $25 million from the legislature, and um, we don't know yet how many pipes need to be replaced, but, uh, but we're, we're committed over the long term to making sure that we stick together and see that through. Okay. Um, and so there's early childhood education classrooms um, opening right now. There's uh, nine uh, new school nurses that, um, that, are, um, that are working as kind of case managers, if you will, in okay. each of the schools for for kids, the economic development work that's happening um, with a you know just for this year, a thousand new jobs is our goal, and we're going to hit that goal. Um, there, so there's a lot of different things that are happening, and um, and, and ultimately um, the the way I look at this is that if Flint is not better off in the future than it was in the past before all this started, it's just not good enough. <laughs> I have to at least make this statement. I talked to a principal friend of mine this morning and told her that I was going to speak to you and asked her if she had any questions. And she said, no, I just have a statement. She says, we don't need nurses. We need social workers. We need one social worker for every 200 kids that are affected by the lead. And I promised that I would tell you that. And I've done so. All right, you guys, it's Common Ground. Remember, uh, Public Access TV, if you want to get involved with Public Access, give me a call at 239-2901. We're getting geared up for this year's Juneteenth celebration right in University Square, the 16th at G-Card, 17th, 18th, and 19th in University Square, 239-2901. We're looking for vendors. We're looking for talent. We're going to have a good time. Guys, remember, Flint is a great place to make better. We'll see you next time.